All right, what's happening? Y'all, it's your boy Rico from Street Scores, and we're here to talk about Nathaniel Frazier. You know, well, maybe you don't. On3 just came out with the updated rankings, and this man skyrocketed from way down deep four star to top 15 player five star level type of guy and i'm telling you he was one of those best kept secrets where even before on three came out with their updated rankings i guess kind of yesterday by the time you're seeing this it's probably july 11th for you but i'm recording this july 10th when on three came up with the updated rankings that's what one of the reasons why it would mainly spark me to uh go ahead and do a film session on this guy and let's go ahead and get this out the way now y'all know with my film sessions i'm very analytical i'm breaking down technique and things like that and we're gonna do that but this nathaniel frazier tape is just so electric and so ridiculous and you can argue um one of those uga podcasts i can't remember his name right now but he brought up a great point that nathaniel frazier if georgia lands him is arguably and you can i mean i would say that he is the best running back that georgia has recruited since at the very least deandre swift and maybe even going further back than that like he's an obvious five star i don't know why it took people so long to finally get a chance to see him and promote him to a five star 247 still has him 143rd overall espn has him 73rd rivals has him 71st again on three had him deep in the four stars somewhere in the 100s now they have him 15th right behind justin williams who's another player linebacker joseph jonah johnny's teammate that we may be able to get even though dylan rayola fell down in the recruiting rankings i don't care i don't buy too much in the recruiting rankings case in point here i i saw nathaniel frazier just from looking at his highlight tape real quick and a lot of these clips we're going to look at today i've never seen so these are going to be my live brand new reactions you're getting raw reactions and film session uh notes and analytics and stuff like that but i've been thinking this guy ever since i just saw a couple of clips of his that this guy how is he not a five star like well i was looking like what am i missing why is he like rated like the 10th best running back type of thing you can't tell me there's nine better running backs than this guy in this class alone i easily think he's the best running back even though george already has chauncey bowens and dwight phillips dwight phillips is the speed demon demon um chauncey bowens is the bulldozer marshawn lynch type of guy but he also has some underrated top speed where he can break away if you let him um he's not one of those guys gonna get chased down from behind but nathaniel frazier we're talking about a complete back again if georgia gets him he's easily the best running back i feel like we've had since deandre swift and i would even go further back to say that he's probably going to be better than deandre swift i'm really high on this guy and again so don't believe in these rankings too much follow the offers follow your own trust your own decision watch the tape and come away with who you want to come away with like i preached a lot over and over again in my previous film session when i did joseph jonah Janye, i was basically just kept saying follow the offers of alabama and georgia love this guy doesn't matter if he's a three star there's a reason that they trust him and if anything believe in georgia stetson bennett lab mcconkey just to name a couple just to name a few just give you two of them endless georgia's development and their ability to scout guys that all of these rankings on three two four seven all of these guys just don't have a chance to get hip up on because i mean they're very limited you'd be surprised at how limited their resources are and how much work it takes to even be able to kind of rank these guys the way that they do when in doubt trust georgia above all of these recruiting rankings but it's still fun i mean i love to hear that georgia just got a four-star commitment a five-star commitment it's so fun to talk about laugh about talk trash on the internet but at the end of the day man when in doubt i follow the offers and i trust georgia above all else back-to-back -back national champions putting the most players in the draft over the past five years out of any program and also setting the record for the most players drafted by one school in one singular draft i trust georgia and they've been on nathaniel frazier specifically to prove my point they've been on nathaniel frazier for a while even after getting dwight phillips and chauncey bowens they've been trying to get Nathaniel Frazier bad and as of right now if he were to commit today I think we do have the lean over Oregon same thing with Justin Williams if he were to recruit uh, commit today I would have us leaning towards Georgia for that over Oregon as well we're having some battles with Oregon we've won pretty much all of our Texas battles and I mean maybe we're a little interested in Brandon Baker but it doesn't really seem like it It seems like we're very happy with all the offensive line we already have this cycle and then we're already looking at five stars
stars that are interested in us in the 2025 cycle all of those type of guys um i really hope we end up getting gaston from westlake my alumni i really hope we look at him but that's all another rant but either way man we're having some head-to-head -head battles with oregon right now they can have brandon baker if we get justin williams and nathaniel frazier that's a big win on our part I'm really hoping we get them and again the reason i'm just gonna go ahead and do this film session now is because i feel like we have a great chance of getting them he seems to love georgia um from insider information that i've been hearing about just everywhere somewhere on the internet and stuff like that again he is leaning georgia he i mean he's not necessarily smiling here but i'm telling you he loves georgia and all of these massive offense alignment that we got in this recruiting class only helps with dylan Raiola as your quarterback and all of these guys i mean if you just want to be a part of the best of the best play against the best of the best you come to georgia if you're nathaniel frazier but instead of taking up more of y'all time we can go ahead and get into this intro but before we do make sure you stiff arm that like button stiff arm that subscription button as well make sure you subscribe to the channel and stiff arm the bell next to that subscription button so you get a notification each and every time i release all of these film sessions i'm working on more content as well so far the channel has been purely film session based especially for a lot of potential georgia recruits and a lot of guys that have committed to the georgia bulldogs and i'm also working on other content as well so stay tuned for that it won't just only be film sessions and reactions and breakdowns of people's huddles and highlight tapes like that so make sure you stay tuned for all of that again i'm trying to come out with daily uploads for this channel along with my regular street scores channel that's centered around my washington commanders so man make sure you stay tuned without further ado let's get it Right, before we dive into the film session, just to let you know, he's 5'10 and a half, leaning towards 5'11, 205 pounds. Again, Chauncey Bowens is the bulldozer. Dwight Phillips is the speedster, arguably the fastest player in this entire recruiting cycle. And then you have Nathaniel Frazier, who's just basically all of that wrapped into one. I mean, he's not quite as fast as Dwight Phillips. And I mean, I don't know, man. The contact balance is so ridiculous that I can't necessarily say that he's not as strong as Chauncey Bowens. He's just, but he's literally the best running back coming out of high school. I feel like in a couple of years at the least, man. I will take him over a lot of guys that have come out of high school the past because we really, really, really need to do our best to land Nathaniel Frazier. I don't care what you got to tell him, what you got to promise him. Dude, just like an NCAA, if you got to promise a championship to get that five-star recruit, do it. Again, everybody else is late. On three was even a little late, but at least they fixed their problems. They they repented for their uh, for their sins. Um, they should have been had them as a five star. Now they finally do, which triggered like, let me go ahead and do this because some people are probably thinking, who is this Nathaniel Frazier guy that just went from a 100s and then now he's top 15 and. I'm telling you, man, when you watch this tape, you'll see. So I'm not going to talk y'all heads off too much. Let's go ahead and get to the analysis. But remember this name. He's from California. Georgia's been doing a great job of recruiting out of Georgia. Um, right now, our biggest struggle is recruiting B Buford. But if we can get KJ Bolin, Bolden, I, I, at this point, it doesn't necessarily seem like we're going to get Edric Houston. But if we find a way to get him as well, that will change the entire narrative. We'll see how that goes. But out of state wise, Georgia has no problem recruiting. We just have a trouble recruiting in our backyard in Buford. The rest of the state of Georgia we love it we do really well but some about that Buford man some about that Gwinnett area just in general I don't know man but let's get it man I'm really excited so we're gonna start with the first play we got his junior highlight let me go and skip past this we don't need to see that little intro I mean first of all wait 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 look at those stats before we move on look at these stats dog 61 carries 791 yards nine touchdowns 11.4 average yards per carry can we just have a moment of silence for the teams that he's been going against and how bad their huddles probably look because of how great he is like just imagine you're an opposing linebacker an opposing DB, opposing defensive lineman and this guy's going for 11.4 yards per carry literally every time he runs the ball he's getting more than the first down can we can we please find a way to stop this man imagine that in the hands of georgia man that's ridiculous 11.4 i don't care if it's high school 11.4 yards per carry is absolutely insane so let's go ahead and dive into this he's the running back you know where he is so we don't even really need that and i mean look at the acceleration there goes the contact balance there goes the top speed he's the fastest player on the field all right so this is the burst and explosion that i mean 
the best way to describe him is that a lot of his game looks like LaShawn McCoy. But at the same time, that type of contact balance reminds me of Alvin Kamara. And it's just like, come on, man. This is ridiculous. Again, I'm going to try to be analytical, but this is more so just we're holding a funeral for opposing defenses today, man. Look at this burst. Look at the angle eraser. I love my angle erasers. At this point right here, this should be a definitive tackle. You have all of this space to make sure you make ground. He thinks he got him. He underestimated his speed a little bit too much. And I love when you're an angle eraser, KJ Bolden is an angle eraser. When you're an angle eraser, man, it changes the game. Michael Williams is an angle eraser back when he was in high school and still for Georgia. I mean, look at this little handoff simple. That's too much speed. There's nothing to really analyze there. He's just the best player on the field. He's the best athlete on the field. But it's, but look, okay, look, I love the jump cut though. This is not just pure raw athleticism. That jump cut he makes on this play right there, that little, ah, let me get through there. I love the vision. And then the contact balance is ridiculous. He's still standing up after all of that? Y'all, no, nah, we just got to take that back just because. It ain't even nothing to analyze. Come on, dog. Come on, y'all. Come on, somebody. Somebody, man. Do not let Georgia get a hold of this, man. Nice hand catcher, too. He didn't catch that with his body. Let's notice that as well. Catches that with his hands. Even some receivers don't catch it. I mean, I love Terry McLaurin. That's my dog. Like, that's my goat for my Washington Commanders. But he's a body catcher. This guy caught it with his hands. And then, what? This man doesn't even see this man coming and he still breaks this tackle? Is he playing this game in third person? How does he know that? How do you? That contact balance is ridiculous. Oh, no. Not like this. Nah, there's no way he got out of that. Nah, nah. We can end this right now, dog. We're only a minute in. This ha He has to be stopped, dog. How does he go from this? Let's just analyze all of this. Three guys right here. Great Wall of China ready to tackle him. This guy, this guy. All these guys. Like, come on, him. He gets added to it. How right here are we, this man, not tackled? How does this, with the running back, these defenders, all of them waiting for him, this results in a touchdown? Right now, just tell me. Just how? How? What is going on? No, for real, though. What is going on? Nah, for real. For real, honestly. Well, I mean, I'm here. Y'all know I'm trying to be as analytical as I can be with these film sessions, but what do you want me to say? How are these turning into... Bro, no, no, no. Again, bro. At this point, how is this a touchdown? At this point, wrapped up, this guy's your help. You got help here. How is this a touchdown? Right here, you're stopping him. Everybody should be able to catch up. Yo, what's going on? Then it's a track race. He's going to outrun everybody. This is sad, actually. This is sad. This is why I don't even know what this was. Were you just trying to show coach that I tried? You had no hope of getting him. He's too far away. What were you... What was this? What was that? Like, you just trying to show Coach A, man, I'm putting my all. This is my motor. You got to, I try, like, did you trip for real? Was this an honest trip or was this, I'm trying hard, Coach? Either way, man, y'all need to give up. Once he's past y'all, it's over with. You might as well go ahead and start running to the sideline. Um, it's kind of hard to see what's going on here, but this is just pure speed, contact balance once again. All right, let's see, man. I'm trying to see some vision stuff. Okay, so there's a little bit of vision. Um, it's, I mean, I... There's two guys tackling him currently. There's no way he breaks out of this tackle, right? There's no way you're telling me. After I press this play button, he's getting out of both of these guys tackling him at the same time. Yeah, this is ridiculous, dog. This is... The speed, it looks like everybody else is playing slow motion. It looks like everybody else is playing on that little... I, I know a lot of y'all are probably too young, maybe, but... That little vibration board where you had the little football people and the board just vibrated... It looks like everybody he's going against is on that, and he's playing regular. And it just seems like with the, his contact, the way he breaks tackles and jukes people out of their socks and his vision so far from what I'm seeing, it just looks like he's playing the game in third person like it's Madden. Like he has an above eagle eye all 22 view. I was about to say, nah, y'all better tackle him that time. But even that was just phenomenal. This man is putting the team on his back because you can't even necessarily say that this is ridiculously good blocking. He's just making a lot out of nothing. There's no way. Thank y'all. Thank you for tackling him. Thank you. We're starting to see some tackles on the film session. Not every play is a touchdown. Look at the burst, man. Why does he go from 0 to 100 like this? Why is he going 0 to 100 like this? Is this man not 205 pounds? I mean, I'm looking at the, the, the measurements. He's 205 pounds moving like this?
511 too. Again, don't forget that this is not some tiny little guy. This is not like a 5'7, 5'8, 180 pound running back. He is 5'10 and a half, 5'11, 205 pounds. He may even add a little bit of weight and not lose any speed when he gets to Georgia too. Wait till he gets to Georgia's weight room and training program man oh my god oh my god you juke that man into a face mask he drew he pressed the he pressed the right stick three different directions uh, uh, right here uh and then oh the face mask it did it it didn't stop him it didn't stop him enough even with the face mask he still didn't bring him down now we gotta watch that again because i think that was like three jukes in one so he's going this way let's ah ah what you doing? Come on. <laughs> now, this is hilarious. This is going to be probably the funniest tape we watch this recruiting cycle, dog. It ain't nothing worse than this. Even when we look at the Dylan Riola stuff, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be ridiculous. Ain't nothing whatever this man got going on, bro, as far as pure con As far as pure comedy, come on now. We're talking just a pure comedic film session what is this what is this burst that's the part that's getting me the most the contact balance and the going from zero to 100 at a ridiculous rate is what's getting me everything else is just extra on top the top speed i mean there's a lot of fast guys like dwight phillips but this zero to 100 you can't teach that you can't coach that you just have it or you don't you can't even necessarily put somebody in a the best training weight program exercise program dietary thing that in the in the world you can put them onto the lebron tom brady program um of of all human beings and they still won't come out like this it's just one of them things you have it or you don't man again at 205 pounds probably gonna end up being heavier than that moving like this is ridiculous I mean, he just looks like a bug out of water too look you see his hands like it's just always something moving like ah, feet moving feet just going just crazy just just the whole time like what's going on bro he loves to keep his feet moving the the zero to 100 is the most impressive part of this the contact balance in the zero to 100 but again remember earlier we saw the fact that he's a he's a hands catcher a natural hands catcher that's huge he's always falling forward too I, I mean the rare times he's been tackled at the very least he's always falling forward that angle he raced was insane right there dog that guy had him you have him come on man Whew, and I like the fact that he got a bounce right there because Buddy was trying to get a free hit on him, probably take him out the game so they can finally have any sort of slim chance of winning. He said, forget that. I'm getting out of bounds because y'all playing. Yeah, this is ridiculous, man. I don't. I mean, I, don't, I really don't know what to break down. This man is just, he's not of this world. It's amazing that this guy wasn't a five-star sooner. And I'm still amazed that 247 has updated it. I mean, of course, on three did it first, and 247 is probably going to eventually do it. But this is a five-star running back through and through man i don't know why that clip just ended so suddenly but now this is pure comedy dog this is it looks alien like i don't know how to describe it I'm trying to find the best words for it but the way that his feet constantly moves just in the zero to 100 the way that he's doing it like it just looks like he's playing at a different speed than everybody else like the sliders are up and everybody else is just slower because like i mean it's hard to picture him running faster as fast as he actually is he's one of those guys that just makes everybody else looks like they're moving slower he looks like he's fast but he's so fast it looks like everybody else is just moving in slow motion in comparison he just looks like he has like a big trip like triple d battery type of thing like what like that was the slowest i've seen him move yet i'm still trying to find some evidence of great vision because that's going to be really important. I wouldn't doubt we can coach that. I mean, when you're this ridiculous of a natural runner and athlete, we can work on vision. But I'm still trying to see some evidence of some good. Oh, yeah. Follow your blockers. I love that. Follow your blockers. At Georgia, the hole is going to be even bigger than that. So if he can, if he already has that in this game, follow your blockers and make that one cut when it's time. Take off. I'll take that. And then the cons. Come on, bro. Like, what happened to the first guy trying to tackle him right there? Like, you had a clean hit on him. He doesn't even see you coming. He doesn't even see you coming, bro. Let's let's track him. Let's track him. This this guy right here, the safety, come here and then clean hit and just ragdolled right off of him like he didn't even exist. He slowed him down a little bit, but it wasn't much. And then, Lord have mercy, he's just so fidgety, man. I don't gone. Like what's going on, bro? This man is so fun to watch. I could watch this over and over again for hours, bro. 
And y'all know, I'm, oh, well, I'm not sure if y'all realize this, but I'm a big defensive line guy. That's my favorite part of football to watch. Like, even on Sundays when I'm watching my commanders, I'm looking at the defensive line more than anything else. But this is just so fun. It's undeniable, dog. And right, I know typically to like a a fan of football that isn't that deep into film session and film study analytics and stuff like that like just a more casual fan running backs are typically more exciting to watch but not all the time man not every running back looks like this oh we even got a little okay that little fancy with it little blitz pickup they're a little fancy with it blitz pickup in boxing blocking my fault man let's get it that's what i'm here for great squared up block in the engagement was that a linebacker or an, that was an edge rusher that he blocked like that it opened up of oh yeah nah georgie do what you gotta do that's it right there he can block too he can block too i mean my commanders just got brian robinson a couple of years ago well last year um and he came in with the athleticism and the strength to block but he didn't have the technique so he was a little he was struggling a little bit before he got shot of course but like early on in the offseason we were trying to get him to learn how to pass block a little bit better same thing for antonio gibson it took him a couple of years and he's still not even necessarily there yet technique wise those guys are great running backs but the blocking is just like man it's hard to keep you on the field in certain situations because we need you to be able to do some some blitz pickup and if he can do this to edge rushers like just completely stand the guy up perfect form block basically look like a tackle almost like a tight end out there i mean perfect hole for him let's see how this goes right here what we doing great block like he's driving this guy away he's driving away the blitzing linebacker wait yo, let's go back go back who, who is he blocking again let me see let me see that's either a linebacker or a defensive tackle a defensive lineman either way it's somebody that should be bigger than him and look at the way he's like literally taking this guy out to play, bro. Oh, yeah, I love this angle. Give me this. Oh, yeah, you're out to play. Yeah, come on now. This guy's taking people out to play. You're blitzing. You're not blitzing anymore. Oh, my God. He had the disadvantage. The guy came in with a little bit more heat than he had. I mean, he's he's sitting there keeping his feet moving again. Little little, little rabbit. Little, little battery rabbit type of guy. Little grrr. That's what I'm going to start calling him, Mr. Grr, basically. Um, he's doing this, so he's waiting for the guy to come in. The guy's coming in with a full head of speed. So he's winning initially with the engagement. Even though my boy Nathaniel Frazier is a little bit lower, I prefer him lower than that, though. George is going to coach him up on that. We want you even lower than that. But at least you're lower than the defender you're going against. So the guy wins initially. And then it's like a running back with an anchor. That's a thing. He sets his anchor and then just starts winning the block and bullies the guy out the way. And that's literally... And then he's still looking for somebody else to block while the quarterback's running. He's the reason the quarterback even has that area to run to. If he doesn't get that block, the quarterback is sacked six, seven yards in the backfield. But he handles his block so well. And then even after that, he's fast. Look how much faster he is than the guy pursuing his quarterback. He's ready to block somebody else. Quarterback slows down. Our boy Nathaniel Frazier has another block coming another blitz pickup he's winning these blocks like this is not like a running back just getting away long enough to give your quarterback time no he's winning these blocks like actually pushing the guy he's in control of the block right now nah 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 that's all i need to see that's all i need to see we're done here we're done here we're done here that was an ugly block right there that wasn't a great one right there but man we're done here dog this guy this guy is insane man this guy is insane. I've seen everything I've needed to see. Look at him blocking. He's the lead blocker. Held a little bit. Not going to lie. Wrapped his arms around the guy. He's blocking a little bit. You can call a holding on that, Conda. But either way, man, the fact that they even trust him to be the lead blocker, like a fullback, basically, or like a motion and tight end or something, to be the lead blocker for this running back and for all of that space to come through because of it. Come on, man. Like, this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. That time, he just did the running back getting away. So, I'm not too happy about that play right there. Nothing really negative to take from it like that. But also not as po positive as it's been. Yeah, this play action and them, him picking up blocks. Golly, man. The way he tracked them down. That's difficult for a running back to do. As fast as this guy's moving and the fact that he's able... I mean, that's just the athleticism and that, that grip to him. Feet moving. And is able to recover and set that anchor. This He's a running back with an anchor? What am I missing something? What's going on? He's a running back with an anchor. I, am I 
am I am I crazy for not being used to seeing this and, and running back highlights? Especially, can we please remember this is a high school player? These are his junior highlights, not even a senior yet. We're not talking about a player going from college to the NFL. We're not even talking about an NFL player who's a lot of running backs still struggle with this. We're talking about a high school player in his junior year that we're looking at right now with an anchor. With an, and then, oh, I love I love that blitz pickup because that, that one showed a little IQ and awareness. He's looking at who does he need to be responsible for. Well, if this tackle's good. And this is like a split second thing. This is going like this. This is immediate. I mean, you saw it in fast regular motion. This tackle is going out there to get him. I would have assumed that if anything, the tackle would have got him. And then Nathaniel Frazier would have been responsible for him. But in a split second, the tackle goes all the way out to the other guy. So Nathaniel Frazier has to get ready to get that guy on the inside and... With him kind of backpedaling because he was worried about him at first and then to reposition himself to get that anchor set in the stone wall that guy is phenomenal, man. This is ridiculous. I'm not going to lie. These, these, this blocking tape may even be a little bit more impressive than his running tape, bro. This is ridiculous. And I would have loved to have seen a little bit more receiving ability in this highlight tape. But this blocking stuff is ridiculous. The contact balance, the, the acceleration to go from 0 to 100, always keeping his feet moving, the natural hands we saw in that one catch, this blocking ability, the it's ridiculous, dog. The, he's, he's an angle eraser, the speed. This is insane, man. I, I don't know what to say. He's a different breed. They don't make guys like this, dog. But yeah, man, that's the end of this video. Please, please make sure you stiff arm that like button if you like this video, if you learned anything from this video. Again, continue to support the channel. I'm working on getting this channel monetized like my other channel, so please support it. Please subscribe if you haven't. Make sure you stiff arm that subscription button and the bell next to it so you get a notification every time I release all of my UGA content, whether it's a film session like this or anything. So make sure you stay tuned, man, because again, daily UGA content coming out. And man, I'm telling you, if you if you haven't, if you've been sleeping on Nathaniel Frazier it's time to wake up and it would be ridiculous if the Georgia Bulldogs go in with all of these in office alignment that we have committed and three really good running backs most notably the best running back in this class and Nathaniel Frazier arguably the best running back I've seen in a couple a few high school classes again easily the best running back we've had since De um, DeAndre Swift if we end up getting him and I feel like he, he may even be better than him um so this is ridiculous, dog. We got to find a way to get this guy. Justin Williams, KJ Bolden, Williams Winery, and Nathaniel Frazier should be our top four targets as of right now. The guys that we want the most wrapping up this recruiting class. There's a few other guys that I'm really excited about, even some other five stars. But those are my four right there. Please get Nathaniel Frazier for all of the reasons we've already discussed and watched in this highlight tape. This is ridiculous. This is a highlight tape, man. I mean, this film session was almost not a film session. It's just too much greatness. First of all, it's one of the longest ones. We typically have like 30 seconds to like two minutes of tape. This guy has seven minutes and 30 seconds. And I love the fact that they broke it up and even were like, hey, man, this guy can block too. Watch this. That was beautiful. So, yeah, man, make sure I support the channel. Again, daily content. I'm going to catch y'all later. I'm out.